Hey Chihuahuas fans, welcome to Southwest University Park and our new segment called EP360. I'm Matt Micah, joined by John Staub. We'll be covering four topics, four bases, going around the horn, under three minutes and 60 seconds. So let's start off with first base. The Chihuahuas played well against Vegas, won three games there. They kind of slid back a little bit against Reno, lost three games there, but Don Roach in that last game pitched huge. Seven innings, four Ks, one earned run. What you see from Roach and the Chihuahuas? The thing I saw is that the Chihuahuas are going to need more performances like Don Roach going forward in the rest of the season. After taking three or four from Vegas and kind of stealing that last game in extra innings to really interject themselves in the race for the divisional title, they took a step backwards against Reno here in El Paso. The epitome of the Chihuahua season really just was showcased in the top of the seventh inning on August 3rd, Bark at the Park night. Reno manages to come out with seven runs, top of the seventh inning. Really sees momentum in that game, sees momentum of the series. Really kind of illustrates some of the defensive and pitching struggles that the Chihuahuas have had all year. And after that, Vegas, three of four out of Sacramento. Chihuahuas right back where they started from before that road trip just eight days ago. Great point right there. Well, let's move to second base. There are a lot of exciting players for the Chihuahuas. When you come to Southwest University Park, who are you most eager to watch? The person I want to see is Reimer Liriano. Ever since this guy has gotten here from AA San Antonio, he has been the Chihuahua's best offensive weapon. Seven multi-hit games in his last 10 games played, 451 average over that span, and a 511 on base percentage. How about you? Lariano, actually the third overall prospect in the San Diego Padres organization for me has to be Jake Gobert. They are six and five since he's returned from San Diego. Last five games, he is batting 474. Gobert? Lariano and Galvez anchoring that outfield. That is a deathly combination. Have not missed a beat since Frenchie's gone back up to the majors. Now let's move over to third base. The Chihuahuas are nine and a half games back, just below Las Vegas. What do they have to do to get back in the hunt? The biggest thing for them right now is winning series. They're currently six games under 500 with six series left to go on the season. If they are able to steal each one of those series, win three of four, win four or five from Salt Lake the two times that they play them, they're going to find themselves somewhere they haven't been since early April, and that is at 500. Great point right there. Now we're going to touch them all. Let's go to home. There are 13 games left at Southwest University Park. There will be a series against Nashville, a series against Memphis, and a series against Salt Lake. They'll go to Salt Lake tonight for a five-game series. What do they have to do against Salt Lake to get back? The biggest thing they need to do is not underestimate the Bs. The Salt Lake offense is very, very strong. They are currently second in the PCL in runs scored, average, total bases, and hits. Lead the league in doubles and triples. And despite being with Colorado Springs, one of the bottom records in the PCL, they really are a team you have to watch out for. The key matchup in this series, as well as the final five games of the series here in El Paso, is going to be whether or not the El Paso pitching staff can keep the Bees' offense in check. El Paso's pitching staff, as well as Salt Lake's, bottom three in the PCL in runs, walks, hits, home runs, and opponent batting average. Great point right there. Also, Salt Lake without deathly offensive production in this ballpark, short porch, swirling wins. We'll see what the Chihuahuas pitchers can do. Speaking of pitching, my favorite matchup is going to be what Jimmy Nelson does against the Chihuahuas and how the Chihuahuas will handle him. Jimmy Nelson, effective pitcher for um, the, the Nashville Sounds. He's been bouncing back and forth between Milwaukee and Nashville. He's 10-2, and two, struck out 114 batters, has only given up three home runs. If the Chihuahuas get on him early, put a lot of hits together, put a lot of runs against him, get that confidence going, that'll be great for the Chihuahuas. That wraps up this first edition of EP360. I'm Matt Micah, joined by John Stop. And remember, Chihuahuas fans, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram for all your Chihuahuas news.